the spasms versus spasticity idea is going back to the diagnosis side of someone's pain management issues, if you will. Ultimately leading to the to use or not to use and utilize a muscle relaxant. And I would always say muscle relaxant. The real core of this presentation is talking about what I would call the island of misfit medications. Turns out what we call muscle relaxants are actually living a different life. Uh, and that's what we want to go into of what actually are these substances, these prescription medications, and also how are they viewed across the globe, including how we in our country view them, but other places as well too. Going back to the idea of the spasms versus spasticity is correlating which muscle relaxant to utilize for spasms versus spasticity. Stiffness versus actual muscle shaking, if you will. If you go to the um, either side of the coin, whether you're talking about the agents that are most appropriate uh, for the, the spasticity side, uh, turns out there, there's generally just a handful of, of real options, especially for what's FDA approved. But when you take a little bit of a closer look at what those actual mechanisms are, as you asked, uh, turns out they work like some other prescription medicines that we have that are controlled substances, nine times out of 10, if not more. And it really begs that question of knowing how the medication works so that you can correlate it to what your expected outcomes or side effects are for a given patient. Uh, when you go to the other side of the coin of those uh, muscle relaxants uh, that are uh, quote unquote most appropriate for these muscle spasms, that's where we really uh, enter that island of misfit medications, if you will, uh, because just about all of those medications are actually structurally disguised as something else and, and that's what we'll be going over to, you know, talk about, well, this medication is actually a little bit of a fine tooth to an antidepressant or an antihistamine, or perhaps in some countries this has been outright banned, but there's another country that has it over the counter. What's going on? What do we do with our mouths and our hands as clinicians? And it would come down to if you have a patient that has an actual, is complaining of and describing knots in their back, that tension, and then you palpitate the area and you look at that and you can see that even, because it, it, if in the right scenario you could actually see it as well too, you know you're going down the route of the, the muscle relaxants, if you will, that are more appropriate for that spasticity. Whereas, exact opposite side of the coin basically, if, if someone's describing that, that, you know, I feel there's a twitching in my back, it's, it's, it's just as painful of the, as the other side of the coin, and when, when doing, say, a physical exam or even just simply looking at where they're pointing to, listening to them in that conversation, uh, you could actually sometimes, a lot of the time, see the muscle twitching, especially if it's on the surface, of course, um, and at that point, you know that you want to go over to the, the side of those muscle relaxants that are most appropriate for that muscle spasming, leaving with the question of how much and how long, and that's a big one. In, in typical observation of practice, uh, we have to remember that our patients, especially those with chronic pain, intractable pain, any pain actually, are going to have bad days. Uh, you or I could have a bad day. And to say that, oh, well, we should use these medications such as muscle relaxants every day around the clock, what happens on a bad day? They should be reserved for those bad days. And the side effects, the, the list goes on, of course, and typically is sedation. But at that point, if someone's already off work for the day because it's a bad day, that might be okay because they're not operating heavy machinery, driving, they're staying home anyway that day might be appropriate at that point. So there we're looking at seeing uh, prescribing dispensing patterns of say, maybe a dozen or two dozen muscle relaxants over the course of three months, pills that is, over the course of three months as opposed to 180, taking it around the clock every day. Big difference there.